Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. It's time for another devotional. Um, it's good to be with you. I wanted to follow up uh, this morning about something that I was talking about on Sunday morning. Uh, specifically, I wanted to talk about the way that uh, Jesus refers to as he claims that title for himself. But before we do that, I want to I want to pray and, and uh, let's pray for ourselves and our, for our city and county. Let's bow our heads together. Father, this morning we ask your blessings and your graces to come upon the city and county of Henderson. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would touch the souls that are represented here. Our plea, our earnest plea for you is that you would have mercy on us as we minister and you would have mercy on this town and this county as uh, they receive your graces. Let, them, let their hearts be opened to the things that you have for them. Uh, this virus and the, the, the situation that we find ourselves in right now is, is a, a significant and serious situation. But more serious than all of this is the eternal salvation of the souls who are going through these things. So our humble prayers for them. Help us to be faithful in our witness and expressing the gospel to people who need to hear about Jesus. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So I wanted to follow up on, on Jesus, uh, the passage that we talked about Sunday morning. Jesus uh, is talking to his disciples about going uh, to uh, heaven. And um, basically, in, they're trying to understand him. He says, you know the way I'm go. You know where I'm going. And Thomas says, no, we don't really know. Uh, and, and we don't know the way. How can we get there? And, and so Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it just occurred, you know, it occurred to me as I'm thinking of the ways that uh, the word way is, is used uh, in a lot of places in the scriptures. But there are a lot of ways other than the way that Jesus wants us to go. We, Jesus says there's one path to heaven. There's one way. No other name given under heaven uh, by which we are to be saved. That's what the apostle Peter says. Um, so, the, you know, Jesus says there's, there's one way. And so he calls us to a way, and there's a lot of ways other than following him. And um, we are constantly bombarded with ways. And I just thought of a couple of, of roads that were taken in the New Testament um, that were actually away from, from Jesus. The, 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 the road uh, to Emmaus is, is one of them. We, we think of that text fondly as we hear about the road to Emmaus and, and those disciples on that road. But when we think about where they were going, these two disciples on the road to Emmaus, they were actually, if you look at the story, they were actually going away from Jerusalem, away from uh, this context where Jesus had ministered for three years and had discipled these two that are on this road for, for I don't know, how, who knows how long they were disciples but um, he had discipled them and that kind of thing. And when he died and was buried, these two disciples took this road to Emmaus, which is, was a road away. It was a road basically back to something they had known before, away from this stuff that Jesus had called us to. And so it was a road away. Um, and it was, a, it was a road of despair. It was a road of let's, let's give up on this Jesus thing. We, it was kind of neat to have a minister to us and he did some miracle, miracles and wonderful things and taught some neat things. But he's, died, he's dead now and he's in the tomb. So let's just go back to the way things were. And Jesus meets them on the road, talks to them a little bit, kind of rebukes them a little bit. Says, and basically says, how, how, how can you not understand that the Christ was was to suffer these things, and he kind of uh, tells the story and, and, and about himself and to, to kind of explains it in better detail, I guess, than they understood before. And then he has communion with them, and he lifts up the bread, and he breaks, as he breaks the bread, their eyes are open, they see it's Jesus, and, he, and then he disappears. As soon as they realize this hope that Jesus, this Jesus has not gone, he's still here, um, they, the Bible says they immediately run back to Jerusalem to report this, uh, this experience to the other disciples. Um, so you, you find these two disciples on a way that's away from, from Jesus, and he turns them around. He, he, he says, now wait a minute, let me explain some things to you. And he speaks truth to them in such a way that they have insights uh, that they didn't have before. And because of these insights that they have received from him, uh, they immediately turn back to the way that they were supposed to be going, that one way, the path of, of Jesus. 
And I tell that story to, to, to say to us that there are paths that we are constantly, uh, there are diver diverging paths all over the place. And we will constantly be called to places other than where Jesus wants us to go. And the challenge for us as disciples is to keep following him, even when the night looks darkest, even when the despair seems to be overwhelming, even those times when the clouds are not letting the sun to shine through, we will still follow Jesus and we will still stay on the way. And so that's our, my, my prayer for all of us. So let's bow our heads together. Father, thank you for your love for us. Uh, as we uh, remember these disciples on the road to Emmaus and how they had to be challenged by your son Jesus Christ to come back into the way, I pray that you would call us back when we wander, when we stray, when we lose heart and when we give up taking the pilgrim way and we go to paths that seem to be much easier than the path that we're on. I pray that you would call us all back, Father. We want to be a part of this pilgrim way until we see your Son and we see you in glory. This is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless Chapel Hill. I'll see you uh, very soon again.